Welcome everyone. It is Tuesday Tea Time with Chala. I am the founder and CEO of The Repositioning Expert and we are here with another live bunch of gems from me to you in our group B2B CEO Society. So today what I did is as on every Tuesday I look at the news and I look at what value I can bring to you around the world of marketing, around the world of B2B marketing. And I read a study by um, a company called Lead MD, which I love their brand name, by the way. Doesn't it tell you exactly what they do? The doctor for leads. And um, so the study was talking about how a third of the US workforce right now, because of the economic condition, hi Ken, is wondering about their jobs. And, you know, not to put anyone down or make you feel bad, but they're saying, they're estimating around 44 to 57 million jobs are at risk because of the new economic yeah, I meant one situation. My job. <laughs> my little guy is here. I'm losing hi, my job. David. I'm, hi. Why don't you come and say hi? And I'm, then I'm, I'm saying hi. Yeah. I'm losing my job because of you. I'm broke. Oh, okay. Well, you were supposed to give me the jobs. money. Oh, uh, my, uh, my, uh, thingy majiggy. What's it called? Oh yeah. A job. Uh, my job or uh, company is failing big time. It's called Mike's uh, Drills and Dingy Majiggies. All right, will you let me do the live now? All right, also, let's do this. Uh, it's <laughs> Logie, yeah, Ken saying Logie. Okay, Thank so you. what else? And here's, you, you see that I'm having my tea. My face is wet. So what I'm actually going to talk to you about is why this is so dangerous for us because so many jobs out of uh, so many people out of work so many companies are shrinking the spend Can pool is shrinking yes thank you. thank you and everybody needs to pivot including marketers so what is what are the implications to b2b sales in this just good tea <laughs> okay it's hot though so what the study is saying is 50% of buyers um, like the phone. So you have to show that you're human. And I'd like to share some of the ways that I like to show that I'm human when I'm doing prospecting. And because I've ported most of my prospecting from in-person to online, some of the things that I've been using and that I'm teaching my clients is around video. So I use uh, something called Loom. And Loom is a one-click video that doesn't, that isn't downloaded. It's just shareable, and it goes along with your message. And you can even put it on uh, LinkedIn once you've actually connected. The other things that I use, I may have mentioned, is the voice uh, option on the LinkedIn. So it's like leaving a voicemail for anybody's inbox without ever having to go through a phone system, find their phone number, do that research to figure out what extension they're at it goes straight to their, you know, to, to their ear. Now, the thing is they have to be on social media and you know, it's, it's usually um, a delayed if the person isn't on social media that much, but it gets to them eventually and it makes an impression. So these are some of the ways that buyers, um, you can show them that you're human. I'll, I'll tell you about an experience that I had. Uh, yesterday I was at a, a large procurement conference online. Now this is usually a conference that we have that has like, you know, thousands of people in the US, hundreds here in Canada, uh, and they ported it to an online, online platform. And it was not on Zoom and it wasn't in Zoom breakout rooms. They literally had a whole conference platform where there was networking rooms, there was exhibitor rooms, and the way that you communicate in the exhibitor rooms with the buyers who, you know, this was a matchmaking opportunity with large corporations for B2B businesses is to text them on chat. That is the new form of networking, you guys. It's chat. So if you're wondering what the future holds in terms of how to meet buyers in these networking sessions, it's all gonna be through chat. And you could DM them, you know, direct message them, and then they get back to you. It's really, really something else. So you, you have to really make yourself um, concise, brief, what you have to say has to have value. So the, here's some other statistics around that. So 44% of buyers, almost half of buyers, think only half of the suppliers they meet provide value. And 
it's even more important now than ever to show and demonstrate that you provide value before the purchase. So I'll give you an example. I'm gonna be doing a live, it's, it's literally a nine day uh, launch. It's a live launch. It's you know five days of training with four days of bonus. And Ken, you're gonna be coming and dropping in. Thank you, I can't wait for July 20th. And it's a boot camp. And for the first time in my life, I'm gonna be giving away everything that I normally sell. I'm gonna be teaching it. And the whole idea is to serve, is to serve, is to serve, is to serve. And that whole nine day extravaganza, you're gonna know everything that I know. And then that's the kind of value, if somebody can get more value out of working with me for free versus all the, the programs that they, you know, five, 10 programs that they paid for in the past, how likely is that person gonna to wanna to be to invest in the accountability and the program and the structure and everything that I can provide to them? So that is what, you know, the framework. I look just as funny as my mom now. Oh, he's got, okay. my, he's got my glasses on. These aren't my This is the reality of COVID, people. This is the reality. So, going back, Logan, cool it, cool it, please. Okay. I'm resting on my cool it, yeah. Okay, so the next piece of information that I got is that 74% of buyers choose um, the company that was the first to add value. Now there's statistics around the first company to respond to an inquiry, and that's why you know the response bots are so hot. You know they increase the um, the higher the responsiveness, the higher the purchase. Um, uh, ability and so there was something like bots uh, enable 400% increase in purchases if they're able to and so that's what I want to um, sort of let you know about and sort of to, to get you to start thinking about is how can you be the first to add value and here is one way that you can be the first to add value is the next um, form of data is 80% of business decision makers want to find out about a company from articles versus their paid advertising and as someone who's doing plenty of paid advertising on social media right now hi Charles um, I want you to figure out a way to be valuable to the buyer and the way to provide value is always through their pain remember it's always what is the most expensive problem that you're solving right now jackhammers and, and so 80 percent of eight business decision makers want information up front before they even make up their mind about you and the first person who gets them that information or who's in front of them is the the vendor of choice so what does that mean that means that you need to be pumping out relevant data on as many formats as you can and i'll give you an example these are lives that i'm doing tomorrow we're going to be doing another live please don't move the camera honey we're going to be doing another live with one of our members in the bdb ceo society and his name is jeff chastain and he is the ceo of a company called Admentus, and it is a tech company that does systems and resources for b2b companies and what that's another value add that i'm providing to my you know to my community what other ways can I be reaching my buyers and providing them value is I do a podcast, I guest on podcasts, I write articles, I post blogs, I do videos, I do two minute tips, and I pour out content over content over content, looking at studies, looking at ways, talking to them. I have connection calls with a lot of you. I'm gonna be reaching out to you and having connection calls to ask you about what content you need around your communication, around your messaging that I can add to these things that I'm pumping out to you. So those are some of the ways that I'm providing value to my prospects and to my community. What are the things that you need to be doing and saying to be of value to them and to be constantly in front of them? And that's a lot of the stuff we're gonna talk about in the boot camp, in the uh, elevator pitch boot camp. And some of you, a lot of you in the B2B um, CEO society are also registered for that. And if you haven't, go ahead and register. Uh, you'll find a link in this. It's repositioner.com slash boot camp. So those are some of the thoughts that I wanna leave you with today is that um, the way in the new environment during this new economy, the new normal as you call it, 
is really, you, you really do need to provide more value, be more present, be more visible so that you can gain more trust because it's even more important today to have to gain more trust because the, the buying, it, ha it has shrunk. The buying pools have shrunk. The employment numbers are gonna be shrinking as that's what everyone's predicting. And as a vendor, as a B2B vendor, you need to stand out, you need to, you know, these are all the things you know, but what I'm gonna be teaching you in those boot camps and with all my content is how. And the major how is to pr base everything that you do on their problems. That's the easiest way to sell. When I was telling Logan, he asked me, what is the topic gonna to be about tonight? And I said, well, it's how to become relevant and how to solve their problems. And that's the number one thing you have to talk about nonstop and to the same target over and over again in multiple ways, multiple channels, and you know, multiple formats and over and over again. So that's the secret. It's really no secret. It's a lot of hard work. You may need some tweaking on how to clarify the message. You may need some tweaking on how to get it out there. You may need some tweaking on your targeting. All of these things that we're gonna talk about and we're gonna teach on how to pick that strategically instead of just throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it sticks and hoping that you know the new economy is not gonna affect you. Just hoping and praying is not gonna work. But so many busy entrepreneurs are busy pivoting their marketing and you need to be doing the same and you will not emerge from this um, you know, wounded. You'll emerge in a way that is going to make you stronger. I talked to, I'm lining up a lot of clients, uh, past clients like Ken, who are coming in to do success stories of client testimonials during the nine days that I'm gonna be teaching the boot camp. And one of the uh, clients was a very successful um, client who had just left her corporate job. And she hired me right off the gate and she was a wine uh, event planner. She took people in large uh, you know, buses or one-on-one -on -one and did wine tastings. And when we repositioned her, we super niched her as a client retention expert for high level, high value service based like you know, a private, you know, wealth advisors and banks and lawyers and accountants. And so as a result, um, we calculated and she's made about half a million dollars from that one niche, from that niching. And I remember that we were three years ago on the same panel at a business conference in front of business women. And she had been asked because of her niche. I ha I've never even ever heard of an event planner being asked to speak on a business topic. And the topic that she was speaking about was her niche, which is business retention. So when I asked her, you know, do you feel that the niche is the savior of the business? Or do you feel that that's what did, you know, the, had the success for you? And she's like, 100%, like unbelievably 100%. And I don't say that because I helped her get the, the niche. I'm so proud of that, that we did but it's just the niche itself, just by fact alone of having a niche is the way that you make more money. And that's what I'm here to show, that's what I'm here to teach, and that's what I'm here to prove. So thank you everyone for having me. Let me just take a sip of my tea because it's Tuesday tea with Chala. And thank you so much for watching everyone, whether you're watching this live or in replay. Do you wanna say goodbye? Goodbye. Since you were so okay, oh, you want me to? <laughs> I don't know. Why well, do all right. Grown? I'm a big fat lazy beast. Oh, I don't know if any can. can I'm a beast. See? Okay. I'm laying down on my. He's couch. laying down on his couch. I am part of the <laughs> I am rat king. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Take care.